guys welcome back to the channel in today's video we are going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is jump game in this question we are given an integer array nums and we are initially positioned at the first index position that is at the first element inside the array and each element inside the array represent the maximum jump length you can take from that position and our task is to return a boolean value true or false we have to return true if you can reach the last index else we have to return false so if you are pointing at 2 it can jump two positions to its right. It will reach maximum here. Now let's take a look at this example and see how this question can be solved. I've taken the same example given to us. This is the nums array. So we start our jump from the first element at the zeroth index. So point i there. So our task is to at least reach the last index or we can also cross the last index. So our target is to reach the fourth index. So our last index can be found out by nums.length which will give you 5 minus 1 because index position starts from 0. So last index will be 4. So this 4 is representing this. Since we start our jumps from the first element, so our max jump as of now will be the value of the first element. So here the value of the first element is 2. So our max reach is going to be at least 2. So from this element, we can at least jump till this position. So we declare our max reach with nums of 0, which in this case is 2. Now we start a for loop where i will be starting from the second element because we at least have a capacity max reach of 2 we are going to check if max reach is greater than or equal to i i is equal to 1 because i is pointing at 1 so we are comparing i with the maximum possible reach which is the first element so this is the condition to check here in this case max reach is 2 2 is greater than or equal to 1 so we have to compare that if with the current max reach you are able to at least touch the last index. So inside the for loop, we are going to check if max reach is greater than or equal to last index. So max reach is 2 now, last index is 4. So this condition is failing. So we update our max reach. So we are going to check if the current max reach which is 2 and nums of i plus i. Nums of i is pointing at 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. So max reach will be updated to 4 and we go for the next iteration. And this is our first condition to check if max reach, max reach is 4, is greater than or equal to i, i is equal to 2, yes. Now this will be our second condition to check inside the for loop. If max reach is 4, is greater than or equal to, last index is also 4. So with the current max reach capacity, you are able to reach the last element. From 3, you are able to jump till exactly the last element. So if this is true, so you return yes or true as the output. So if you get stuck in between, or you were not able to reach the last index, you return false as the output. Now let's implement these steps in a Java program. Coming to the function given to us, this is the function name and this is the input array nums. And the return type is boolean, so we have to return either true or false. Now let's start off with a base check. If the length of the input array is equal to 1, then we can return true because we are already on the last index position. So we return true as we reach the last index position. Now let's calculate the last index position. Last index position can be found out by calculating the length of the nums array and subtracting minus 1 from it because index position start from 0. So last index will be at lumps.length minus 1. And we are using a variable max reach to calculate the maximum reach you can take from each index position. And initially we are at the first index position right so we assign max reach with the value of the first element and now we start our iteration from i is equal to 1 so until max reach is greater than or equal to i we keep moving it and now inside the for loop we start off by checking with the current max reach are you able to cross or reach the last index position so if you are able to do that you can return true else it means you can't reach the last index with the current max reach so we have to update the max reach so you have to update the max reach with the current max reach or nums of i plus i so this will happen for all the elements inside the nums array and if at any point of time you are not able to return true inside the for loop it means you haven't reached the end last index so we return false outside the for loop now let's run the code let's submit the code and our solution has been accepted the time complexity of this approach is o of n where n is the length of the nums array and the space complexity is O of 1 because we are not using any extra space. Now let's debug the code using this example inside an IDE. So I've taken the same function which I've written on lead code and I'm calling the can jump function inside the main method and the input array nums is of the example one. Our return type is boolean so I'm catching the output here and printing it. And now I place two breakpoints inside the code. Now let's debug the code. So this is the input array we have 
and our last index is 4 because nums.length is 5, 5 minus 1 is 4 and max reach is assigned with the first element value. So max reach is 2 now and we start our iteration from i equal to 1 and we check using the current max reach are you able to touch the last index or cross it. You are not able to because last index is 4 and the max reach is 2. So you will reach maximum till here. So it won't enter the if statement and it will enter the else block. And in the else block you are updating the max reach. So your max reach is 2. So max reach is 4 now. And now i will become 2 and last index is 4 and max reach is also 4. So using the current max reach you are able to reach the last index. So the point is that you are at 2. So instead of moving to 1 you use one jump of it and reach 3 and from 3 you use all 3 to reach the last index. So this condition is satisfying so you enter the if statement and return true. So this boolean function will return true for this example and I am catching it inside the result. So we print the result is true as the output. So here you can see the result is true as been printed and that is the expected output. That's it guys thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.